I'm a bill foe. I tell a stripper, I'm a tipper, but come swing on real ball. The strong is strong. The weak get gone. If you disagree, then my money long. Same old song. If you're a different thing. Hallelujah. Guys and rulers. Ain't about the moolah then. What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Before we get into this week's scent, I just want to talk about two two things real quick. The first is um, I want to thank Al Fragrance Fanatic for shouting me and two other reviewers out. Uh, you know, if you don't watch Al's channel, the Street Sense channel, you're just straight up bugging. He's got a great channel. Uh, something does something that none of us do, which is go out in the street with fragrances and see what normal people think on video. Uh, and he shouted myself and two other reviewers, two very other good reviewers, Joe Anthony and, and Chad, out. And he ran a contest in order to win some samples. You had to subscribe to, to uh, our channels and comment in our videos. And, you know, people who are established in this game already shouting out uh, newer guys really helps out and it's paying it forward and something I hope to do you know when I get a thousand or so subscribers I'm definitely on the march well over 500 now and a lot of that's thanks to, thanks to Al he got me I think a hundred since uh, since he ran his little contest so big shout out to him I appreciate it man uh, also I just want to talk about a line real quick that I recently discovered uh, I'm not really a hype guy I think you all know that I have a lot of respect for the dudes that do hype stuff Hero, Renee, you know, uh, that's what the the fragrance community is about. People who have different styles. But I don't really buy, you know, I'm not really a hype guy. You know that. But I recently did discover a, a, a house, thanks to my, my man Creed Frags Ryan and a few other reviewers. I think Dan Mickers did a review on this house. And it's called Imaginary uh, Authors. And uh, I reached out to the owner. He's also a member of a website. I'm a member of Badger and Blade. And I wanted to see if I could get some samples from him. And he sent me them out. And to say I'm blown away, you know, I, I said that's like saying I was blown away the first time I heard Illmatic by Nas. Like it's just I've never. These are unbelievable fragrances. He 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 think he gave you know gave me samples of everything in the line. Um, the the samples come with these look like bookmarks, um, and each fragrance like this one's a soft lawn has a made up story. It's a made up book basically by a made up author, an author who really didn't exist. But the book is in the. The fragrances are influenced by these authors, so it's <clears throat> unbelievably creative. Um, Falling into the Sea is one of the best, I'm going to say that right now, no problem about that, one of the best citrus fragrances I've ever smelled, and I've smelled all the Zerjoff ones. Um, and another one that I am just in absolute love with, with uh, the one that I'm going to be buying probably pretty soon, I don't have the, uh, the uh, tag for it, uh, the, the bookmark for it right now, but it is called... Um, uh, memoirs of a Trespasser and it's a vanilla sort of boozy cognac scent perfect for winter uh, so those two so far I've absolutely fallen in love with I'm going to be reviewing that soon I'm going to be reviewing Falling Into the Seat soon as well I'm blown away by this house I must have emailed Josh five or six times just to tell him that uh, and so you need to check this out if you haven't already. I'll put a link in the description and at the end of the video to Josh's uh, website, the Imaginary Authors website. Super creative. Like if you look at Cobra and Canary, um, the, the notes on this are lemon, tobacco, flowers, orris root, leather, hay fields, and asphalt. Uh, other notes are the month of May and bull's blood and uh, warm sand so just super super creative and great sense and about $85 for two ounces so it's a niche brand that's affordable and I think it's going to hang up hanging with the big boys I, if I was a buyer for Barney's or Neiman or Bergdorf which one day I aspire to be I would make sure I had this in my collection um, and I, I have some connects at Bergdorf and, and I'm going to speak to them about this because I really am I'm, I'm passionate about the, this brand and the perfume behind the fragrances Josh so Big shout out to them, and I'll definitely be doing a review on them within the month, probably. But what are, what we're here today for uh, is to look at my second Serge Luton fragrance. I think the first one that I reviewed, Fee and Agui, was very early in the game. Might have been the third or fourth scent that I reviewed. Well, it didn't blow me out of the water. I recognized the quality of the fragrance and the house and the brilliance of the perfume, Christopher Sheldrake. And I sort of decided that would be a house that I'd pay a lot of attention to. And I looked through their library and jotted down ten or so fragrances that appealed to me, and I I plan on picking one or two up every fall and winter. 
Now I did the history of the brand in the first video that I did. So if the history interests you, please check out the first video of Fi and Agui, which I'll link in the description. But to make a long story short, this is a house that was started in 2000 by Serge Luton's in very close conjunction with the perfume maker, Christopher Shell Drake. And there are over 50 fragrances in the Luton's catalog. And what I like about this line is that there are a bunch of bottles that can be picked up for under $100. You can get them from websites like Amazon or FragranceNet or Beauty Encounter. And it isn't always easy to, to get a niche scent, let alone such a high quality one for sub $100. I can probably count on my fingers the brands where the entry point is sub $100, probably on one hand as well. And Serge Luton is one of those houses. This is one of those scents. I picked this one up from Amazon uh, for $75. And this is Jean, 5 O'Clock Eau Jean Jambre. And the notes on 5 O'Clock Eau Jean Jambre are tea and bergamot at the top. Ginger, cinnamon, woody notes in the middle, and cacao, honey, amber, patchouli, and pepper in the base. Now, as far as your uh, Serge Luton's presentations, they're very simple. The bottles come with a combination. They give you two choices. You have a splash or a travel top that comes on the bottle when you buy it. And then in the box, there is an atomizer with the tube in it and that cap. Uh, it's just a very simple glass bottle. The presentation isn't going to blow you away. It's very simple, but it's also a little, it, it, it's nicely elegant. Uh, the white labels on the Serge Luton scents mean that they're available all over the place. The black label, labels mean they're exclusive, so you have to look a little bit harder for the black labels. Uh, you've got your barcode and batch code on the bottom, a little bit of information about the fragrance on the back, and that is basically it. So a very simple uh, presentation from the House of Serge Luton's. I do want to say if you can get some of their fragrances come in these beautiful 75 ml bell jars that are these glass jars that are only available, I believe, at the boutique in Paris and some Barney's locations or some exclusive Luton's uh, uh, locations because I have seen them in Barney's as well. So what this fragrance, 5 o'clock Eau Jean Jambre, is going for is it? It's, Luton's is trying to take you on a journey through England. Tea time in an English manner with black Wedgwood china, gleaming silverware. And I'll tell you guys what, this is one of the rare fragrances that I've personally come across that doesn't come out with intense opening swinging notes. It's very restrained when you spray it, almost to the point where you might wonder whether there was something wrong with your bottle. But then as the fragrance evolves, it starts to change very much for the better. And you'll definitely get ginger and honey and cinnamon. And after a little bit of time, smoke and cocoa and pepper. And uh, what you get there, the best scene I can describe this scent is take picture a cold fall morning, you're enjoying a nice smoky fireplace with a cup of warm ginger tea. That's really what this scent is about and it's a absolutely a perfect scent for the colder weather coming ahead. Maybe the reason it does come off sort of restrained to me in the opening is because there's bergamot in it. And you don't expect when you look at a juice this dark for bergamot to be around. You think maybe, you see the darkness, you think this is gonna smack you across the face like a whiskey or a rum or a cognac and it's got dark and spicy notes. But uh, as I said, you've got to give this one a chance. You've got to keep coming back to it and keep getting your nose on it. Someone at Base Notes remarked that they found this to be one of the more approachable Luton's fragrance. I couldn't agree more. Spraying this on initially, you're almost greeted by what could be uh, sort of confused as a designer scent. It's not really until it opens up and unfolds in your skin that you start to understand the quality of this fragrance and what a great job Sheldrake did blending it. And that to me is sort of becoming the hallmark of the Luton's house. They blend fragrances well and they use complex notes to make interesting accords. You can be fooled into going crazy with the sprayer on this one because it is so light. Um, but it, it will be a skin scent for a while. It doesn't have outrageous projection or longevity for that matter. So if you're looking for something like that, you might want to steer clear. This is a very soft and refined scent that both men and women can pull off. I've been going with five sprays, one behind each ear, one in each wrist, and one in the chest. Tea is supposed to be calming. Uh, it's supposed to be relaxing and subtle, and I think that speaks volumes to what this scent is about. It's very restrained, delicious ginger, honey, tea, and incense. Last week, we looked at Mitza by Christian Dior, and that is a scent with honey and incense in it as well, but Mitza is a full-out assault, and this is more like a sneak attack. You sort of have to decide which is more suitable for you. I like having both. I'm happy to have both as I start to really build up my, my, uh, my full rotation full and winter rotation and this will definitely be in it i'm going to give this a seven out of ten i like it and as i said i think it's well blended i wish i guess that it uh had more at the top of it you know and i'm, I'm very I'm not 
100% sure this is going to do great in the really cold winter. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to play the role that I want it to when I'm, you know, all bundled up. I was seriously thinking about giving it a 6 out of 10, but then I thought back on the price that you're able to pick this scent up for under $80 with delivery, and that's a pretty damn good deal. I'm sort of, sort of stunned that you can pick scents like this one and share Gia for those prices. I can guarantee you that any Luton scent, maybe with the exception of Musk Kublai Khan, uh, that I can get in that price range, I'm probably going to wind up getting. They're just also interesting and, and well-made. And even Kublai Khan, which we all know I don't love, I have to admit it's well-made, and its progression as a fragrance is very impressive, as is this one. So guys, just so you know, I'm going to be stopping by Min next week. We'll probably be grabbing one of the Mancera scents and probably Lair du Desert Marocain by Andy Tower. I told you how much I like that in a sample shopping video I did. That climbed very high on my to-buy list and jumped a lot of other fragrances. So those will probably be the next two niche reviews coming out of Mancera scent and Lair du Desert. Uh, we'll also be looking at Potion by D Squared, which I was blown away by, uh, as well as Vintage by John Varvatos, which my buddy Joe Anthony, one of the reviewers that... Uh, fragrance fanatic Al shouted out he sort of inspired me to look at uh, John Varvatos vintage and of course I will be reviewing a fragrance from imaginary authors that is guaranteed coming up um, at first I was just going to do a sample shopping episode with imaginary authors but I've become so impressed that uh, there are two cents from the line I'm 100% sure I'm going to buy one for fall and winter and one for spring and summer also guys we've definitely got more sample shopping videos coming up we'll be looking at scents from Amouage, Montel, more Serge Luton's, Mona de Oreo etc uh, we've got a video coming up on the best, best men's face wash for sub ten dollars so you'll definitely want to check that out we We've got my full starting lineup coming out and part six of my collection video. So tons of content coming out. I want to welcome all my new subscribers and you know, please comment and like. Uh, and uh, if you're just watching this, please do subscribe because as I said, ton of content. We try to do at least two videos a week. Always guaranteed to be a review a week. Um, thank you so much for watching. Big shout out to Josh at Imaginary Authors and Al at Fragrance Fanatic. I am Maximilian. Grew up at a fast pace. Yo, Rob ain't the only one who had bass. Now everybody snitching. Ain't this a bitch? It feel like a rat race. I remember when I hustle, I had grace. Sad case, now look at all the bad taste. Axe A. What's in your safe? Ain't safe on my OG emoji. Man face.